We can't have the CPL in Guyana without a little blackout. Well, it wasn't exactly a blackout, more like a partial failure of the artificial lighting system at the Providence Stadium. Soon as the lights went out, chaos ensued on social media. The Barbados Royals and Trinbago Knight Riders were locked in a tense contest at the Eliminator. Momentum was going back and forth. The TKR seemed to have gotten a hold on the momentum, with Nicholas Puran sitting on an unbeaten 91, looking set to make a century and cap off his big impact with the bat on the night. It was also Dre Ross at the crease who also seemed poised to make big impact with the bat at the end of the innings, pushing the TKR to what looked like a competitive total. But then everything changed when the lights went out. While the lights were out, the online discourse went in two distinct directions. There was lots of discourse about social issues and infrastructure development in Guyana. And on the other side, there was lots of talk about the cricket itself. If you're only interested in the cricketing side of this discussion, you can use the chapters below to skip right ahead to where I talk about the game and the cricket itself. On the social side of things, there's much to discuss, but it really comes down to a series of failures. The lights first failed at the Kyrgyz T10 blast. At that time, it was seen on a live stream and the issue was acknowledged. And a bit of a power failure here at the National Stadium at Providence. We see a few of the stadium lights just coming off momentarily. Not long after, it happened again during a Ghana Amazon Warriors practice session. This reoccurrence suggested that the matter was not resolved. Regardless, once again, the issue was noted. Along comes September 1st, 2024, and the issue happens again. This time on the biggest stage with a global audience, the CPL Eliminator between the Trinbago Knight Riders and the Barbados Royals, showing that even after this second occurrence, the matter remained unresolved. The third occurrence of this problem in two months suggests that despite two blatant warnings, the problem remained unresolved. No matter how you twist it, that's a failure of management. Sure, this problem may have happened somewhere else, but how does this glaring issue go unresolved more than once? That's the main question I have for the these things happen crew. The other question I have is that, is this failure made more acceptable because this problem has happened elsewhere? Shouldn't we be holding ourselves to a higher standard? Regardless, certainly for the CPL, a two hour delay due to light failure is unprecedented. Now on to the cricket inside of things. The light failure was obviously an unforeseen circumstance and the match officials could only cater for it within the rules of the competition, which is exactly what they did. If you want to get a better understanding of how they came to their conclusions, you can always go look at the CPL report concerning the entire incident. Naturally, Barbados Royals players and fans are happy to see that their team came out on the right end of their situation. <laughs> And also understandably, TKR fans are frustrated and upset that their team came out on the wrong end. Regardless, what ifs are futile. There were so many events that led up to TKR even being in that eliminator in the first place. You can look back to the game versus the Amazon Warriors. Had they taken control of the game when they were on top? and bowled the Warriors out under 104 runs, they would not have been in the Eliminator in the first place. So fans can easily look at their captain's bowling choices in the middle phase of that game. Then, additionally, in the Eliminator itself, the same way Duckworth Lewis set the score for the Barbados Royals to chase, and the Royals chased it down, the TKR bowling attack could have prevented them from chasing it as well. To the fans who were crying out, sabotage, sabotage, I find it hard to see why Guyana, the organizers, officials, or even the management at the stadium would do something so costly and embarrassing just to get TKR out of the tournament and set the Guyana Amazon Warriors up for a win that hasn't happened yet or isn't even guaranteed. That sounds an awful lot like frustration talking. The Trinbago Knight Riders being out of the tournament does not guarantee a win for anyone. After the result knocking the TKR out, any of the remaining teams are more than capable of winning the competition. 
And it's only natural to feel some degree of anger or frustration at your team being knocked out in such circumstances. If you go strictly by the book and the rules of the competition, the result is fear within that context. But naturally, again, it won't feel fear because of how it occurred. It didn't seem like the players had a chance to have their fate in their own hands. So for the umpteenth time, fans have every right to be upset. Players do too, as we saw Dre Ross take into social media to vent his frustrations. However, the same fans and players who were frustrated would have quite easily been celebrating had the lights not come back on in time and the team progressed due to their higher position on the table. What do you think about this entire ordeal? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As for me, after this situation, I've come to three distinct conclusions. First, we need to have a serious conversation about sports development and infrastructure in Guyana, especially as it relates to maintenance. Second, the Guyana and Trinidad beef is not finishing anytime soon. And third, it's always entertaining to see fans go after each other with more bitterness and animosity than the players have for each other on the field. As always, I'm the Unspecialist. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support.